My name is John Connolly, and I am the grandson of James Connolly, Commandant General of the Dublin Brigade and leader of the GPO Garrison. The following video shows our vision for the conservation and restoration of numbers 14 to 17 Moore Street, Dublin, the final headquarters of the Provisional Government of Easter 1916. Moore Street is located right in the heart of central Dublin, the capital of the Republic of Ireland. The story of the Moore Street National Monument begins with the occupation of the GPO building on O'Connell Street. Following prolonged British shelling, fires spread uncontrollably and a breakout to Moore Street was undertaken. Number 16 became the final headquarters and the site of the decision to surrender to the British forces. Numbers 14 to 17 Moore Street will be exactingly restored to their original period condition. A small new building will bookend the terrace providing structural support and framing the entrance to a new quiet public square. This will provide a tranquil space appropriate to the monument and contrast with the bustle of Moore Street. The space will be landscaped simply and the historic pre-1916 structures will be incorporated into the commemorative centre. The surviving pre-1916 warehouse boundary walls, including the brick and stone facade, will be retained and repaired. Phase 2 is a renovation of the Moore Lane warehouse, which will provide extended facilities to the commemorative centre. The finished building will retain the historic walls as a key part of the design, and the new structure will clearly read against the old. Perhaps a native fruit tree will be placed, or the eternal flame of Irish freedom, or the phoenix rising from the ashes. A terrace at mezzanine level will provide views across the open space to the rear facades and returns of the National Monument buildings on Moore Street. The fully completed commemorative centre will restore and incorporate all the historic pre-1916 buildings within the National Monument. Extending from Moore Street to Moore Lane, it will allow for extensive visitor access to this important part of our national heritage. The second floor will be dedicated to the archival of materials related to the 1916 Rising. It will facilitate access to information for the public and researchers alike. Ground and first floors will form the public exhibition spaces. Features will include faithful restoration, reinstatement of the battlefield tunnels and key exhibits such as the proclamation and letter of surrender. The basements will contain educational, audiovisual, and support facilities. Number 17 and the adjacent building will contain public facilities such as the bookstore and cafe. We enter the building through the ground floor of number 15 where the reception area is located. The ground floor features the text of the proclamation applied to the walls. Moving through to number 14, we enter a simple rectangular space, which can be used as an exhibition space or seminar room, as illustrated here. Returning to the stairwell of number 15, we move up to the first floor. Arriving at the landing, we see the first of the battlefield tunnels joining the buildings. Moving into number 14, you can see how footage is discreetly projected allowing the walls to remain completely untouched. The character of each house is unique and distinctive, and each is treated in a different manner. Number 14 is darkened and focuses on projected exhibits, including a room dedicated to the story of Nurse Elizabeth O'Farrell. Number 15 is a single open space, ideal for the exhibition of items of historical importance in a bright, welcoming environment. Freestanding display cases are used, including environmentally controlled exhibits of the proclamation and of the O'Rahilly letter. The tunnel to number 16 features a dramatic jump over the stairwell into what will become the final headquarters of the Rising. Number 16 will form a quiet, contemplative space. The rooms will be carefully restored with only a quiet projection or audio installation to help evoke the surrender and its aftermath. Continuing to the rear of number 16, the tunnel to number 17 will be featured along with the projection listing all of those who died in the Rising on both sides. The public will exit through the ground floor of number 16 to finish the tour. 
My grandfather, the O'Reilly, was killed in action on Moore Street, leading a charge by volunteers. Before taking his last breath, and despite his injuries and obvious pain, he wrote my grandmother, Nanny O'Reilly, and his children, including my father, a farewell letter to express his love and devotion. To honour my grandfather's memory and the sacrifices made by all the leaders of the 1916 Rising, we have fought for over 12 years as a group to save the buildings from demolition as proposed in the late 1990s. We then saw the buildings designated a national monument and now have the permission and the funding to have them fully restored. Preservation work is now urgent. We cannot risk letting these buildings remain vacant and unrestored. The onus is on us all now, government and citizens, to see this national project through to completion and not to leave these important buildings at risk any longer. We look forward to seeing this work completed in time for the centenary of the Rising in 2016 to commemorate our independence.